Today my sermon title is called First Thirst. Not first first, not first first, but first thirst. Mm. Um, it's taken from John 4 verse 7. It's quite a familiar passage to some, to those that haven't heard it before. It's just a conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Uh, it's quite a large passage. I'm going to try my best to read it as quick as possible, but as slow as possible to understand it. Uh, if we jump straight in, is it up on there? Yeah, everyone can follow along. So it says, a woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Mm. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you um, he would have given you uh, living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us this well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty. Again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will never be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. For you have had, Jesus said to her, you are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. <laughs> Our fathers were worshipped on this mountain. Um, sorry. I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to a woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know, we worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. I hope you stay with me throughout that whole passage, because we're going to need it, or we're going to need it all, all of it. I've got three points today, two questions and a result, and an outcome, so I won't be long. The first, where I want to start off firstly though, is in the world, there's a term called thirsty. So I told you my title is first, first. But in the world, there's a term called thirsty. Anyone know what thirsty in the world means? Anyone? Demon, T-H-R-E-N-T. Oh, no. well, it's not a word. Thirsty. So if I, was a, if I was with a group of male friends, this is the quickest way to explain it. If I was with a group of friends, and I see a lady, not now, Wait, like I'm married now. <laughs> if I see a group of females and I, and I say, I say, yo, bro, I'm going to move to that girl, you know, I'm going to get her number. But five minutes ago, I just done the same thing. My boy can turn around to me and say, stop moving thirsty, you're moving thirsty, oh, leave me. Louder. <laughs> get me. Let me not just say that about the men, but there's the, the females. They can be with their group of friends and they can see a good looking guy and be like, oh, has he seen me? Has he seen me? I'm looking at his eye, I'm looking at his eye, I hope he leaves to me, bro. And her friends can turn around and say, leave it, stop leaving thirsty. Leave it out, leave it out. And it indicates, it indicates like desire. Mm. The person's desire is what they want, affection. It's, it's too much, they're showing a lot of attention to a thing. 
And where I want to go with this for my first point is who's thirsty? What's our greatest desire? Because really and truly, our greatest desire, our greatest, uh, I'm going to say another word, our greatest, like, um, indication needs to be for God. Yeah. Yeah? So if someone was to look at me, they, don't, they shouldn't be looking at me thinking, oh, his greatest desire is females and money and cars. My greatest indication to my first should be Jesus. The way I walk, the way I present myself, maybe a conversation. They can see something that's a, a, a bit different, but they're going to have to get to, to know me to know what, what's so different. And I can tell them who's my first. Now the question for us is, that I want to give to, to everyone is, who's your first? Mm. Is your greatest indication your first? Is your greatest indication about your life your first and who you are first and for? Now, of course, our first in this passage of scripture indicates to Jesus. We should be thirsty for Jesus. The same way in the world how people are thirsty to get attention and attraction between people or whatever and, and all of that kind of nonsense, we should have that same thirst and desire to, to run towards Jesus. Come on now. And first for Jesus. Because at the end of the day, he's the one that's going to give the living water. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, in this conversation, later on, we can see that the woman had five husbands. And it's, as I was saying, it indicates that she's kind of been through a lot of men and there was a void. Mm. There was a void. She was thirsty for maybe male affection, and back in those times, guys could actually, it might not have all been her fault, just speculation, but those times the guys could actually divorce a woman without any reason. They could say, I'll oh, see a better one in the street and divorce her. So she could have added up numbers that way, but we don't know because it just speaks about her, really. so we just have to speculate about her. So it could be said that this woman was thirsty, but thirsty for the wrong thing. And that conversation that she had with Jesus at the well, filled that void. Jesus filled that void. So for some of us, we might be thirsty and it's like we have a void and it needs filling and we don't know what it is. But I'm here to tell you today, if you thirst for Jesus, that void can quickly be found out. The Bible says to examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith. When we examine ourselves, we can say, Lord, this is not quite right with your word. It's not quite aligning. It's not quite aligning. How do I get it right? How do I get it right? In us doing that, we're showing first to be better, first for Jesus, to be yeah. more like Jesus. Yeah. We're showing that we're, we're not just going to walk willy-nilly about this walk. We can't be willy-nilly about this walk because we're in the last days. I'm sure everyone's aware. We're in the last days, things need to be getting serious. So as I say, examine ourselves, if you're writing down notes, just write on, just a little reminder. I need to examine myself. I need to really sit down with God and examine myself. Am I walking right? Am I thirsting right? Is there distractions in my life that's taking my attention away without us even knowing? See, I was in a time um, in my life, not too long ago, where I was, I was thirsty for God, I was in the Word, I was reading, I was praying, and then it became like, man do this every week, man do this every Wednesday, it's all the same, and we can kind of get it just through the motions, through the motions, we don't feel like anything's changing. And for me, I had to examine myself, I said, yo, let me just, what's, what's going on? What's going on, what's going on, what's going on? Why do I feel like it's just going through the motions? And God showed me simply, that my thirst for him had kind of stopped. It was, it was like I came to a place of, I, I, I know, and the thirst to keep knowing just stopped. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, I just want to lead on to my second point is, how do we become thirsty and how do we stay thirsty? Mm -hmm. For a lot of us, for some of us, it might be for you to stay thirsty, you might need to come to church come around the congregation and, and, and that helps you. For some of us it's praying, praying for one, two hours during the week and it helps you to stay first. For some of us it may be you enjoy reading the Bible. 
With all those things said, they're all needed. We need the word, we need prayer, we need worship, we need to incorporate all of that in our walk to really be at our best. Mm. Be our best. Be at the, be, be closest with God in that in his presence. To hear from him, we need to read the word. To hear from him, we need to be in a place of maybe worship and prayer. So we need all of it. We need all of it incorporated. And in verse 10, I said it with a bit of vim. I don't know if you caught it. I said it with a bit of oomph. The Bible says in verse 10, if she got Jesus' response to her, if you knew the mm. gift of God. Yeah? So for some of us, we're well matured. We already got faith. We're not new believers. There may be new believers here, I'm not too sure right now. But for some of us, we're, we're, we're well matured. We know what's going on. But for me, God really said, sometimes people just need a reminder. Mm. Come on. Sometimes people just need to cast their mind back. That's right. And get stirred up. And I believe that this morning has yes. been a stirring. Yes, yes. I believe everything that's been in, just been in line for us to be stirred yes. and to rehear things that we've heard before. So Jesus never said that he'll give her fresh water, Evian, mountain rock water. <laughs> None of that stuff there. He said, live in water. That's right. Well enough to eternal life. If she knew mm. who it is. Right. So for some of us, we may be first in for God, but in the right direct, wrong direction. The wrong direction. The right direction is to know who Jesus is. Why did Jesus come? What for? And what does it mean to me? The slogan here says, Know Christ and make him known. Believe it or not, church, he ain't going to be known to no one if you don't know him yourself. You're going to be going outside, you're going to be shouting, and it's going to be clashing cymbals and noise. And people are going to walk past and be like, I don't know what that person is doing. But if you knew Christ, know Christ, and keep on knowing Christ, mm. when you step out, you're going to be speaking from an overflow. Yeah. Because yeah. everything in your life and what pertains to you that void has been filled now. Yes. With those voids being filled, you're going to be in an overflow. When you speak in conversation or when you're walking, the joy, the love, all the fruits of the Spirit is going to be overflowing so that people outside can say, wow, wow. So that's what living water looks like. Yeah. I haven't got that. I need that. In the conversation, Jesus doesn't even say too much. But I'm, I'm guessing that the way he spoke to the woman, the woman's never been spoken to you like that before. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's some people out there that need a conversation of the same thing they've heard already, but come across different. That's right. Come on. That's why there's so many members of the body, and God That's needs right. all of us. God don't just need one oh, preacher, yeah. and the one preacher can speak That's to right. everyone, because everyone's not going to relate. That's mm. right. Come on. Mm. Pastor P's invited me to come and preach now. And it's it's not because he's getting old. <laughs> and no, no, he needs a no, young no. person. Yeah. <laughs> he can speak to who God put him there to speak to, and I can speak to who God put me here to speak to. That's right. But we're That's both right. past P's levels, but we're both different. That's right. All of us are different. Yes. But we're all needed. Come on. We're all needed. Yes, we all need. Amen. Come on, Jesus. That point there, I feel like I've got, got that one in the deep still. So we need to basically, yeah. Yeah. we need to grasp That's the revelation of who Jesus is. Once we grasp that, we can then give it back out. Amen. Amen. That's right. I do have another scripture, Proverbs 14, 27. It says, The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. And I love the way this scripture reads and pieces in with this story. So I'm going to break it down. This is this I'm going to be a lot like this because I've broken it down. I want to make sure I give it out right. I'm not going to be turning as much. So, the fear of the Lord, we can break down 
quite simply, into awe, reverence, and submissions. Submission, sorry. From verse 7 to 15, the conversation so far, the woman isn't submitting to Jesus. She barely knows him. So she tries to brush him off. It's like, you ain't even got a bucket, man. No, man. You don't want to drink. <laughs> what he do not know. What's going on with his brother? The Jew as well. <laughs> Speaking to me for once. Like, you know what I mean? She's, she's, not, she's not trying to hear what Jesus has got to say. So she's quite closed off. She's not in awe of him. She has no reverence for Jesus. She's not going to be the So, with all of that, By the end of the text, we can see that the woman's attitude changes. Yeah. She starts to ask Jesus, where, where does he get his living water? How, how can I get it? So, because she knew, because Jesus said about her husbands also, she became in awe. Come on. She, she, she stood there and wow, this guy knows about my life. Yeah. <laughs> so her attitude changed towards him. She began to reverence him because she says I perceive you're a prophet yeah. and then she then submits in, in a way that where, where do I get this water? where do I get this water? so we need to we need to find ourselves in all reverence and submission also That's right. to have the fountain of life to have the, the living water if not then kind of, kind of going to miss it I'm going to miss it. We need to be in a place of awe where God is a, is a mighty God and He's all powerful. We need to reverence Him, show Him the right. Can't just talk to God anyhow. Mm -hmm. We can't brush Him off. When God's telling us something, we can't just brush Him off. There's, there's got to be reverence. God is levels. And submission. We need to submit our lives. The Bible says to. Um, Wow, it's just gone out of my head. The Bible says to lay down our lives and live in sacrifice. So we need to submit our whole life. And in that, the fountain of life, when we, when we grasp those three things, the fountain of life, the Greek word for fountain sounds like makor. I can't give you the spelling because I didn't write it down. I just wrote that it sounds like this. So I can pronounce it right. <laughs> it sounds like Mako, which means spring, fountain, source of life, joy, and purification. Yeah. So I don't know if any of you have heard the um, analogy about a cup filled up with water, and through life the cup gets dirty because we're all sinners. We've all fallen short from the grace of God, and we need God to renew us. Yeah. The living water that we need goes into the cup, begins to pour out all of the water. The water is still a bit dirty, but it begins to get clearer. And by the end, the water is clear. Mm. I'm not going to lie to you, as well. None of our water is clear. That's why. It's still dirty. That's why. It's not going to be done until the end. That's right. Come on. So don't think you've made it. Come on. And don't kid yourself. Because <laughs> the God. enemy will have you in that snare quicker than you think. Come on, come on. We've all got to stay in un under under the water. We gotta know that we always need Jesus. We always need that living water. We always need that first. That's what I'm trying to get at. We can't kid ourselves. So the last part of Proverbs 27, uh, 14, 27 speaks about the snares of death. And as this word comes comes out as a stirring, sometimes we need to just look back, look at look within ourselves and say, Am I trapped? Have I been trapped? Have I forgotten? Have I forgotten where God's taken me from? We just need to review it. And once we've reviewed it and we say, yo, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in the snare, I'm not in the snare. How many people can say, I'm not in the snare? I'm free. Come on. We should all be free. Come on. Come on. Come on. You believe it. Come on. We should all be free. Come on. Once we get to that place of being free, then the living water that's
run inside of us through us being thirsty, then kind of changes. Kind of changes the, the um, perspective of the living water. The living water's perspective changes in, in, in terms of now you know about Jesus, you thirst for him, but you need something else. And it's the Holy Spirit. Come on. And when the Holy Spirit comes in, the only really way that we can really be changed and transformed and renewed our mind is by the Holy Spirit. So that's what I mean by the perspective of the water changing. It may be a cleanser to start off with, but then the perspective, the, it, it changes from just water to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit transforming us, renewing us daily to be more like Christ, we then become empowered by the Holy Spirit. When we're empowered by the Holy Spirit, we can then go out and do what God has called us to do. So, I just got here what God showed me. When I came to visit a few weeks ago, I walked in and I said, Lord, no, I'm writing down this sermon, but I want to give something to the church. Let me see something for the church. And God cast my mind back to Elijah when he was on the mountain with the two bulls and he said to the 400 of prophets of Baal, call upon your God and if he lights it up with fire, yeah, we'll worship him. If not, burn that. <laughs> if the Lord God lights up this bull with fire, then we'll worship him. Yeah? Cut a long story short, them men were cutting themselves, dancing, all of that, and nothing happened. Rubbish. And we see a lot of that today. There's a lot of idols outside today. That's just rubbish. But people still have a void that needs filling. And I don't know about you, but I've got a heart for people that don't know. I'm like, if I got it, they need to know it. Yeah. And when you have the Holy Spirit, when you have the first and the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit will give you the heart that God has. And God don't want none to perish. So you will have that heart. If you don't have that heart, then... Oh, for you, you need a little bit first. Oh. But you'll get that heart. First, you work on yourself, but you'll get that heart. Trust me. So going back to the two bulls now. What I saw was the mountain, the two bulls, the fire came down, consumed it. Just like uh, how, it, how it's written in the Bible. I said, God, but how does that relate to this church? How does that relate to this church? When all of you in here, Arctagin, come into unity, mm -hmm. then, and the bull was representing you lot in unity on the sacrifice, then he had to drench that thing. He drenched it three times. So as we all begin to thirst, we're drenching, mm. we're drenching, we're drenching, we're drenching. Then the fire of God comes down, the Holy Spirit, mm. and empowers it. everyone, consumes everyone to the point where I was looking at this place like everyone's filled. Mm. Do you know that you can have church and everyone's filled? Have you ever been in a place where you're like, um, like 99% of the people in here is filled because the atmosphere is just so strong? I was seeing this place like everyone in here is filled. And the way the chairs are set up today, I was thinking, yeah. Because in, in the rows, you can kind of, that's like every other Sunday. Sometimes we need to mix it up. When the way we're sitting here, you can see over there. You can see over there. Do you know what I mean? And, it, and it's, it's, a, it's a good change. It's a, it's a good change, way to mix it up. And the Holy Spirit came, came down, fire, burnt up the thing, boom. But there's more to the story. The story still leaves out those that were around. When he called all of the people to come see, those were that were around. I believe God don't place no church nowhere for no reason. Uh -huh. There's people around here that don't believe in Jesus, that don't believe he's the, the only way. So when God's planted this place here now, and the fires come down, <laughs> like my brother said, there's a process. 
The process starts off with the sacrifice, the sacrifice ain't even wet. Then you got thirsty and the sacrifice got wet. Then the fire came down and then the people saw the power of God. See, sometimes you, you're starting off small. God said, don't despise the small beginnings. Come on. Why? Because you need the, you need the process. Come on. You might need to unify in here, right. strengthen each other up, Come on, Jordan. and then watch this space. That's right. How God will explode outside. It's not, it's none, it's not, it's none of us. Word. It's all God. So the people Come outside on. will begin to see. Oh, is that what's going on in Dagenham? That's right. Then they will, then they will begin to hear because the word, the um, faith comes by hearing. That's right. And hearing the word of God. Yeah. Come on. So as you not travel out of this building of fellowship, they need to hear. That's right. What's changing in our lives? What's being different? What are we learning? Where's the fruit? When they hear those things, the attraction starts. Then you start seeing new faces. God can start drawing people in because he's sending you lot out in overflow. Yeah. I believe God is going to overflow in this place today. Yeah. I believe God is going to overflow so going back to the Samaritan woman, we see that when she's finished this conversation with Jesus, she drops the water that she just took out of the well. So her void was filled, she dropped the old and went to tell people about the new. Come on. So some of us were going to hear the old, uh, hear the new, drop the old and go and tell the new. I believe when we pray in a, in a moment, I'm believing for God to pour into us. I'm believing God to open our hearts so that we can have a greater thirst for Him. Because none of us are, are made it, We're not made it. We always need to know Him. We need to be knowing Him. We need to thirst for Him. So as we just um, come to a close, I'm just wondering if we can all stand to our feet. Father, I just thank you for this word that you spoke through me today, Lord Father. Amen. Yes, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that the hearts of your people would have received it, Lord Father, and been challenged to be thirsty for you, Lord Father. Amen. I just pray, Lord Father, for your Holy Spirit to fall in this place, Lord, to fill us up, Lord Father, with living water, Lord, changing us from the inside out, Lord Father. I just pray right now, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to lead our daily lives, Lord, so that there can be no distractions taking us away from you, Lord. That our first and our desires will be for you yeah. and to know you and to keep knowing you. Yeah. So that we can overflow yeah. onto the streets of Dagenham and the surrounding areas. Yes, Lord. Lord Father, I just pray that as we stand here together in one, Lord, I just pray for unity in this house. I pray, Lord, that you move throughout the congregation, Lord Father, yes. touching each and every person, Lord. Yes, Lord. That no one is too far from you, Lord Father, Amen. and you want all to come to you, Lord. I just pray, Lord Father, that as we begin to know you, that we can make others known, Lord Father. As you've commanded us to make disciples, let us grow, let us build each other up, Yes. Let us encourage. Yes. Let us stay on fire. Yes. Let us stay first. Yes. 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 In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord.